the Olympic Field House. Boris Mikhailov, the greatest goal scorer in Soviet history, number 13, dazzles here with his play, gets the puck to Sergei Starikov. Petrov also gets an assist, and the Soviets are en route right now. That set the pattern of the game. Starikov scoring first. Then Mikhailov made it 3 0 for the USSR, and the barrage continued. Goal number four, the Soviets' goal here came at 12-19 of the opening period from the stick of defenseman Vladimir Fedosov, right there on the rebound. Petrov and Harlamov assisting on the goal. But Vladimir Petrov right there along with Fedosov, and he sends it home. A gallant effort by the Japanese goaltender, Iwamoda. He gave it a gallant effort in goal with Japan, but his non-existent defense certainly didn't help him out. Alexander Golikov made it 5-0 on a two-on-one passing play from Makarov at 14-59. Then at 17-30, Baldera scored to make it 6-0. The Soviet seventh goal from Vladimir Golikov, the younger brother of Alexander, and then Vladimir Golikov scored again at 19.26 of the first period, and it was 8-0 for the Soviets. Vladimir Golikov got another goal. And then Boris Mikhailov made it 12 to nothing. And one had to have a little sympathy for the Japanese national team. Fedosov rounded out the scoring, and they have just scored again, and it's 14 to nothing for the Soviets over Japan. We'll have more coverage as this is CTV, Canada's Olympic Network. The Soviet Union team is the heavy favorite to win the gold medal here at this Olympics, as they have in six of their last seven tournaments. To be fair, the Japanese are still learning. At the moment, they're ranked right at the bottom of the list in the two divisions here. Now to the rink, and the commentators Ron Roosh and Tom Watt. Thanks very much, Lloyd. And the story here, of course, is just the Soviet Union completely running away from Japan. You have to pity Japan a little bit. They have just been totally dominated and bombarded. They have to also pity the poor goaltending. Uh, Takeshi Iwamoto started the game, and now the second goaltender, Minoru Misawa, is in. Uh, the scoring in this game is it's now 15 to nothing, 7.35 remaining in the contest. Alexander Golikov has two goals and an assist. Vladimir Golikov has two goals and an assist. Valerie Harlamov, a goal and four assists. Boris Mihailov has four assists in the game. Vladimir Petrov has two goals and two assists. Helmut Balderas, one goal and two assists. And the shots on goal right now, Soviet 62, Japan 19. Tom, uh, <laughs> you really can't judge what uh, how good the Soviets are or will be the rest of the tournament, but uh, against a team like this, certainly they have, well, they all are doing now is just having fun out there. <laughs> really. Well, they, they, well, everybody in the world knows they have a great team. They're the world's champions, and certainly Japan coming from the V group are in a, a great deal of difficulty in playing a hockey game like this. Uh, when we get a moment, there's some interesting changes, however, in the lineup for the Soviets. All right, well, let's pick up the play now. That's Fedosov, number two, blasting one right at the Japanese goal. The Japanese coming away with the puck, but they get it only out to center ice before Kasatinov takes over, feeds Balderas, who just deflects it into the Japanese zone. We've got 6.45 left in this hockey game. At center ice now, the Japanese coming over the line and carrying the puck there is Hoshino. He got the shot away, but it was well wide of the net, and at center ice once again. Down over the line, Balderas cutting out in front of the net, but it rolled off the end of his stick, and the puck is flipped out to center ice once again. Kasatinov turning with it, working on a defensive pair here with Fedosov. Here's Balderas in over the line. He shot that one wide, and the puck bounces out all the way over to the other side. On me. On the out of center ice. There's a behind the net. Fedosov touching it back there, and it's called on the icing. The faceoff will come back in the Japanese zone with 6.13 left, 15 nothing. The Soviet Union is leading. This is CTV, Canada's Olympic Network. Play underway here off the faceoff. Alexander Golikov inside the Japanese zone, rolls it out in front. There's a high shot taken at the side of the net by Makarov. It goes into the corner. Japanese player falls, and picking up the loose puck is Vladimir Golikov. Rolls it in front, and a chance there for Makarov, but it rolled wide and over to the far boards. Japanese coming out at center ice, but again, the Soviets take over. Vasiliev in his own zone, feeds it out to center ice. Makarov, he ducks a check. 
And trailing on the play and carrying the buck over the line is Vladimir Golikov. Out in front, there's the shot. It's right on the rebound. And it flips high in the air and is batted out of the air and into the net for the 16th goal for the Soviet Union. And scoring that goal, Alexander Golikov, who now has a four-point night going for himself as well. And that completes his hat trick. Well, there's nothing to this game, is there? Because <laughs> after the original shot, the puck does come up in the air and Golikov really bats the puck out of midair. There's the puck out, up, bouncing right out of midair into the net for his goal. So Golikov will get the goal, 16 to nothing now with 5-10 remaining in the game. Makarov will get it a point as well. The time of the goal, 14:49. Puck against the far boards. Picking it off there is Maltsev, the veteran. He swings a pass away to the, this side, and Perbukin. Perbukin to Krodov. Krodov working for the line now, cutting around the defense, going to the side of the net. Now sweeping it back out to the blue line, and it will go to Belia Letnov. His shot kicked way out on a long rebound, and the Japanese will try to come out to center ice with it. Sakurai. He gets over the line, knocks down a bouncing pass, right to throw it in front of the net. Should make that Vladimir Mishkin is in goal for the Soviet Union. After the first period, he has not really been tested too much in this hockey game. Maltsev. Maltsev. That's Pervukin at the blue line. And it's knocked down at the defense. The Japanese come away again. And flares fall right at center ice. Puck is against the boards. Lebedev. Fuji. And now here come the Soviets once again. Maltsev. Maltsev backing in towards that. There's the shot as he spun and fired that one. And again, it's goes to the side of the net. Lebedev after it. He's number 11 out there for the Soviets. Here's a shot that's wide on the net. Lebedev gets it again behind the net. Maltsev circling out in front again. Maltsev getting set. There's the shot. And he is dumped just as he got that shot away. And the goaltender is forced to make the save. Back down in the Soviet zone. Erbukin. Erbukin ahead. Maltsev over the line as the Japanese got caught on a change there. Maltsev. Maltsev spun around. Gets it against the boards. It's cleared up ice. And Erbukin goes back for it. Does that know? Behind his own net. Now clears it into the corner. Over to the far side. Kazatinov. Erbukin. Erbukin out at center ice. Turning with it is Mihailov. Mihailov. Over for Petrov. He hits the line. Petrov. Petrov in against the boards. Petrov trying to get set for a pass and it went off a leg. Still inside the blue line as Kazatinov controlled it momentarily then lost it to the Japanese. And here they come over the line and just as they were trying to set up a play in front of the net, the pass was intercepted by Kazatinov. Called on the offside at the blue line. This is CTV, Canada's Olympic Network. There's the coach of the Soviet team, Viktor Tikhonov. Well, uh, it's very interesting that Coach Tikhonov has made a few changes. Uh, there we see a, a real upset, uh, Poland 5, Finland 4. That's a, a very big upset in this tournament uh, that has just started today. And uh, interesting news uh, as far as Team Canada's chances, too, because that's one of the teams that Canada really felt it had to beat in order to make the medal round. And they've already been beaten by Poland. Buck is over the line. They'll be playing them on Saturday. Mihailov getting it into the corner. Harlamov. Harlamov, number 17, working out to that blue line. Harlamov still with that puck, trying to keep it on his backhand. Now it gets to the forehand, but he gets bumped and spun around a bit. And now it's Petrov. No, it is not. It's Petrov. Petrov over to Petrov. Petrov with lots of room gets in front of the net and shoots. And the puck is cleared away by the defense after it's being blocked by Misawa. The Japanese goaltender. Now Wakabayashi over the line. And just as he got over the line, it's checked away by Kasadunov. Bounces out, runner out over the blue line, brought back in and then cleared out over center ice. Here's Mihailov on a break. Mihailov in front of the net, and he took a pretty good slash there from Witasa of the Japanese. Petrov against the boards. Petrov, Petrov to Petrov. There's a shot that's right on. It's loose out in front. There's a shot through the goal crease from a bad angle taken by Mihailov. And now it's Petrov in the corner. He tried to drop it off for Mihailov, who had his back to the play. Jammed in against the boards. Harlamov moves in, takes the puck, gets out in front of the net. Now gives it to Petrov, who tries to jam it in and fails. And the puck is behind the net. Now here's Kazadonov. Kazadonov to Mihailov. Mihailov with 1-0-1 left in the game. 
Mihailov. Mihailov back to the blue line. There's taken by Kasatinov. Kasatinov to Harlem. Off in front of the net. It's deflected to Fedosov. Down goes the goaltender. And it's called for a faceoff. This is CTV, Canada's Olympic Network. Well, we've had a little bit of shoving while we were away in between Nakamura of the Japanese team. Valerie Harlamov has been right in the middle of this, too. The temperature, well, they were starting to throw the weight around a little bit over the last little bit. Not I well, think promoted by the fact that that slash there on the, I guess it was Mihailov going in on the net. Well, the Soviets have been very, very mean, and uh, they're trying to dominate teams physically. I talked to Herb Brooks, the United States coach, when they played in New York City last Saturday, and he said that the Russians were the meanest he has ever seen them. I don't know whether that's a reflection on the political situation. Here we see the scuffle in front of the net, uh, grabbing over shoulders, and the sticks come in, and everybody starts getting, you know, push night glove in the face, and that's what starts things going. Here's everybody kind of into it, but the Soviets really haven't played the gentleman in this tournament to this uh, point. All right, out there, Shlukdov, he'll face off the tallest player on the Soviet team. Big fellow, number 22. And we're underway with 51 seconds remaining in the game. There's a shot from the blue line. Petrov rolls it in front of the net. Nobody there could knock it down. Balderas. It was out there. It's cleared over two lines down into the Soviet zone. Come back for a faceoff just a couple of feet inside the Japanese blue line. Well, there's a fellow that's traded some pins already. There are lots of people here that are that make a, an occupation out of uh, trading pins, getting as much as they can. They're trading outside the arena and all the venues. On the faceoff, Balderas against the boards. Balderas being checked there by Asuma. Fuji goes in the corner after the puck, and it's cleared out Starikov. Starikov over for Balderas. Good move in front of that. Balderas shoots. It's right on. He gets the puck again, rolls it in front. They flip it wide of the net. That was Sportsoff there. Now Sportsoff getting another chance at it. Gives it to Balderas. Balderas unable to get loose as it rolls off his stick, and he has to go back out to center race for it with 14 seconds remaining. The score is 16-0. The Soviets are leading. Running up the goal count, of course, uh, may be a factor before the tournament is over. Now Schwarzoff over the line. Schwarzoff being checked from behind, and as he's checked, the horn goes. This hockey game is over, and the Soviets have won it easily. They had an 8-0 lead at the end of the first period, and they finally skate to the dressing room after this one's over, 16 to nothing, the final score. They had over 70 shots on goal in this one. Well, the Soviets have made, uh, we see Mishkin, who uh, shared in the shutout tonight, but uh, the Soviets have made some interesting changes in their team, and Canadian fans who are going to see more of them on our coverage uh, of hockey will realize that there are eight members of the Dynamo team, which uh, toured Canada uh, earlier and the United States earlier uh, this year, and there are 11 members of the Red Army Club. So uh, 19 of the, the players here have really been quite familiar to Canadians in, in the last month or so playing in Canada with either Red Army or Dynamo. All right, the teams with the traditional handshake at center ice, and they'll head for the dressing room. The Soviets have got their tournament on their defense of their Olympic gold medal of 1976. And the Japanese draw a hand from the crowd. One thing about them, they didn't quit skating. They always try, no matter how far behind they, they get in things. But they were just overwhelmed by the Soviets. There's the score, 16 to nothing, final score. Well, Soviet Union uh, ha have got a great hockey team. And another interesting member of the Soviet team is Vladimir Krutov, who is a junior that they brought along. Uh, this year with their, their team. He was a member of the World Junior Championship Soviet team, which won the tournament uh, in early January in Helsinki. And so he's another young star on the Soviet horizon. Well, you talk about uh, young Fedosov, who's just 21, has already been with the team, what, three years now, Tom? And, and uh, Sergei Starikov, uh, second year on the team. So they are continuing to develop great hockey players. And, and uh, this team just doesn't look like it's ever going to start to, to fold up on, uh, on people. And there have been some changes in the Soviet defense. Babinov and the veteran Luchenko uh, have been left at home. They are not on, on the team. Uh, and another very surprising uh, person left off the team was Kapustin, who uh, did play on the line with uh, Balderas and Zhluktov and made up a, a real formidable unit. Uh, but for some reason, I, I don't know whether he has been injured or not. Uh, he was uh, hurt uh, during the, uh, the series uh, with Red Army in, in New York City. He was hurt in a practice session uh, in early January. But at the, at the present time, Kapustin is not with the team.